Hi everyone, this is Nathan and Scott McPherson, second generation tax defense attorneys. The McPherson Group, tax defense attorneys. Today we're going to give you an overview of criminal tax defense. But before we get started, let's go over some very important points. Do not talk to the IRS Criminal Investigation Division agents. Instead, here's what you should do. Step one, get their business cards. Step two, tell them you want your lawyer and don't say anything further. Step three, hire us. It's very important to not waive your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and to definitely invoke your Sixth Amendment right to counsel. The three most commonly prosecuted tax crimes are failure to file a return and pay the tax, Title 26, Section 7203, willful failure to file, return, or supply information or pay a tax. It's a one-year misdemeanor with a $25,000 fine. Filing a false tax return. Title 26, Section 7206, fraud and false statements. It's a three-year felony with a $100,000 fine. And tax evasion. Also, Section 7203, attempt to evade or defeat tax. It's a five-year felony with a $100,000 fine. When more than one person is involved in a tax crime, the U.S. attorney invariably also adds conspiracy charges. Title 18, Section 371, conspiracy to commit the offense or to defraud the United States. It's an additional five-year felony on top of the underlying charge. And when the false returns were mailed to IRS, mail fraud charges are also added. Title 18, Section 1341, Frauds and Swindles, it's a 20-year felony. Fundamentally, all tax crimes have two basic elements, the prohibited act and the defendant's mental state. Thus, to defeat the charge, you either attack the alleged behavior, for example, by proving that the tax return was not false, or you attack the alleged mental state by proving that the defendant did not have the requisite criminal intent or you attack both. All tax crimes require a particular mental state, willfulness. Willfulness is more than mere negligence, more than gross negligence, and more than gross disregard for the law. Willfulness means an intentional violation of a known legal duty, not a mere mistake of fact or mistake of law. Did you believe that you had a legal duty to file a return and pay the tax? The Supreme Court has held that it doesn't matter whether the jury believes that your belief is reasonable. What matters is that the jury believes that you believed that you did not have a legal duty, that you did not violate the law. In Cheek versus the United States, reported at 498 U.S. 192, the U.S. Supreme Court held that the test for what is a reasonable good faith belief or a good faith misunderstanding is subjective, not objective. Our father tried the companion case to Cheek, United States versus Dunkel. You can read about it on our website under the title, The Case of the Missing Truffles. Dunkel was a medical doctor who believed that the U.S. tax system was voluntary. He didn't believe that he had a duty to file a return, and thus he failed to do so. He was convicted at trial and then lost his appeal to the Seventh Circuit. But that conviction was overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court when the Supreme Court remanded the case to the Seventh Circuit in light of the Cheek holding. A related way to attack willfulness is to prove reliance. Reliance means that my lawyer or my CPA or a similar expert told me it was lawful and I relied on his expertise. We've had many cases dropped at the criminal investigation level or later by using the Cheek defense and proving reliance on counsel. See our website for our list of dropped criminal charges. Whatever the stage of your criminal case, the sooner you have criminal defense attorneys on board, the better. Remember your Fifth Amendment right to be silent, your Sixth Amendment right to counsel. Do not talk to the investigators. Instead, hire us. The McPherson Group, tax defense attorneys. BeatIRS.com.